Good evening, everybody. Welcome to It's Lit with MJ Kane, filming live here at Grind Factory, excuse me, at the Grind Factory on Grind Time Radio ATL. I know it's been a few weeks, but hey, that's life and we still live it, so it's all good. So thank you for joining me this evening. I am so excited to introduce you guys to my new guest here, this young man who is new to me, I will say. Um, I met him through the Grind Factory, through one of uh, Major Shenanigans' regular guests that's joining us over here in the background is Mon. It's Mon. <laughs> you know he always got shot himself out, because it's Mon. But anyway, everybody, let me introduce you to this young man named Smoke. How you doing this evening? I'm great, and you? I am um, all right. It's been a great couple of days of not having to go to work. <laughs> so unfortunately, I got signed up to have to show up at work tomorrow. Not gonna talk about that. But anyway, <laughs> so from a little bit that I have gotten to know about smoke, and it's I'm so glad you sent me this information too, because I was I was wondering who you were. Well, first of all, I like to say I would like to say I guess you're kind of like mis mysterious as your name, smoke. Like, for first of all, I love the way that you have it spelled out. It's not just smoke. It's S M O K three. Yeah. What made you change that? Like, right. it was actually like the idea was given to me from my friend who's sitting over there. Like, <laughs> they helped me invent the name, so it's kind of organic. Like, I don't know. Was it stand for or represent anything? Yes, like, cause a lot of people call me smoke, and the way that it was spelled. I find it different and it stick out, so I ran with it. Okay, so what did they call you smoke for? <laughs> or is it that obvious? I'm saying, like, you call me smoke black, smoke weed, smoke whatever. <laughs> it's smoke. <laughs> it's smoke, okay, just smoke. All right, got you, got you. All right, so now one of the things that you told me I thought was fascinating was you've been reading since the age of one. Yes, I have. And when I tell a lot of people, they look at me like I'm just a liar. I actually can, I have references, I have people I can go to who can tell you about who can confirm this. But yes, I was reading the newspaper at the age of one. Like, saying the words. Yes, saying the words. Wow. Wow, I know. How did that happen? I can't say. Like, my mama say, she always felt like I was, I was in life. Like, I started walking at six months, like I was moving fast, like I developed very fast. So, Woo, you were a fast, my baby. Yes, I'm telling you. My mama, she talk about it a lot. She remind me every time she get a chance, like how much of an advanced child I was. Wow. And they showed in elementary, like I had good grades. I was always top tier in my class. So, <laughs> wow. Okay, so then, yeah, I can understand how you were writing by the age of three. <laughs> yeah. If you was reading at one, walking at six months, you better be, you better be doing something major at three. <laughs> that wasn't the place to stop. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, like, what do, you, what do you write when you're three years old? The alphabet? I color oh, all types of things. Like, my mom would tell me to try to spell something. Like, I, I wasn't perfect, but I tried. So, it could be various things, like objects, like subjects. Like, I used to watch Jeopardy, like, <laughs> trivia. Yes, my mom used to wow. question me. I promise you, I kid you not. And this is all you is at still a three? Yes. Are you answering yes. the question? Yes. Jesus. That's awesome. That is awesome. Wow. I'm scratch my head right now. <laughs> I went right so I was about to swear. <laughs> I didn't start crying. I didn't be right. All right. For those of you who can't see, we'll probably have the peanut gallery, aka it's mine, <laughs> um, in the background. <laughs> Making comments as usual, but that's okay. <laughs> that's it's, it's perks to being in the background. <laughs> <laughs> perks to being in the background. All right. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay. So, <laughs> right. Well, fortunately, you were writing well beyond twelve. I think at twelve, you would have been doing something else major, like publishing your first book or something. Yes. <laughs> 
my mom was just learning how to write. Uh-huh. Playing with Pokemon cards. I definitely was not. That was what I was playing with. I'll probably be a diet. Oh, Lord. Hey, girl, hello. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> back to the writing aspect. <laughs> Jesus. All right. So, you started writing songs when you were nine. Yes, I did. So you started writing songs when you were nine. Yes, I did. Okay, so this is the thing that's been on my mind. What type of songs were you writing at nine? To be frank and candid, they were kind of explicit. Like, I, I, I love rap music ever since a jit, so I started writing rap music. How explicit can you get at nine? Never mind. Okay, let me tell you something. There's a lot about the world that MJK don't necessarily know. Why? Because MJK grew up in the country. When I say I grew up in the country, I'm talking about south side of Griffin, Georgia, in the county, out by, uh, oh, God, what? Just by, just by saying out by. <laughs> I live out by. I can't eat Barnesville. Out by Barnesville. Out by Barnesville. So you literally had to ride. Are you familiar with Griffin? Yes, my mother. She's from there. My grandmother. Oh, really? Yes. What part of Griffin? I forget, but um, Jackson. If I'm not mistaken. Okay, so she was way out there too. <laughs> like when I say, my neighbors across the street had a cornfield. Cornfield. And cows in the back. I can't even. I can't even. Um, the people over here to the left. Now these are all black people. Now. I can't even. I can't even talk to my folks. North Carolina. <laughs> I'll be telling folks, they'll be like, what is the North? What? Yeah, what is the North Carolina? So, like, you can't get, you really can't get more than that. <laughs> my, my, my father's side of coming there from Sylvester, Georgia, about Albany. Yeah, that's fine. They got a little city in Sylvester, though. Huh? They got a little city in Sylvester. It's country, bro. I, we I, used to I, go I've been, been recently. They got a little nice little I understand little what, little what you're saying. Up, he but said he been recently. You, you wasn't with me. <laughs> On them country roads with I, the I red really, clay, the net swarming. I mean, like, it, it's country now, but you can see the development in, in, in time. Well, I'll just say this. The street that I was we were on, it was two black families, two large black families that owned both sides of the road. And I believe they like sold it to like um, some housing people who came and built houses on whatever. <coughs> like I said, the corn and cows across the street. This side, uh, they had corn over there, cows, pigs, chicken. So, <laughs> well, my people are from Maryland. <laughs> so, I don't know what I am. I'm not exactly country, but I'm dang sure ain't city. I'm somewhere in the middle. <laughs> so, yeah. You said what? Country. Country. Maybe that's why. That's nice. That was well, I was gonna say maybe that's why I kind of get the other voice on from time to time. From from every time to time. <laughs> See, I don't mind. <laughs> MJ will change your life. I told you we're using correct grammar at the Grind Factory now. We're pronouncing our E's and our R's. <laughs> I for E except after C. I'm <laughs> being using my inside voices a lot, Rob. <laughs> No, we're not. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> if anything, MJ has loosened up. Yes. Yes. And I'm using a whole bunch of words in my vocabulary that was not necessarily in my vocabulary before. But anyway, <laughs> moving right along. Okay. So now you said that you've begun writing again a year ago. It's like music wise. Okay. I haven't did no personal narrative or anything of that nature, but. I want to jump into that field. Like, Wait, hold on. See, he just got fancier than me. He said personal personal narratives. Oh, well, hey there. <laughs> you don't like been Googling this week. <laughs> <laughs> it's a natural bro. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't go for it. Go for it. I like it. I like it. But you said personal narratives. And I'm like, wow, I haven't even used that term. But okay. Gotcha. Like I was saying, I it was a it was a brief period like where I stopped like just right period like it was so much going on. Mm-hmm. So I used it at downtime and put it towards 
like my drive to write music and do music now. And I done lost part of me shitloads of music, like to damaged phones, ah. being careless with my book bag. Uh-oh. Yes, like so I'm really starting over. I, I don't have an archive yet. But it's we're gonna get there. But you know how what they say. Sometimes that stuff that you lose, like myself as a writer, sometimes those chapters or the story that you lose hurts like a mother, but when it comes back, it's usually ten times better than it was before. So that music and stuff you got lost may have to, may have happened happened. I can't even get it out for a reason when you do get it back. Probably so. Probably. So what type of music do you like writing? I'm I'm I consider myself conscious and woke, okay. but I'm still into the rap. Like gangster rap, like it's something that thrives like in my community and this how would you say this? It's it's popping like it's what the people want to hear and by me being an artist, like I feel like I should supply their needs, like if I want to be heard. It's a large it's a large audience of people who wanna hear gangster rap and rap period. So that's my genre that I prefer, so that's what I'm going for. So here's a question, because I don't write music. <coughs> Excuse me. Is there a way that you can combine the two? The yes, gangster rap and the conscious? Yes, it, conscious yes, message? it is. And as, as, a, as an artist, I'm growing and I'm going to work towards that because I feel as if everything should have, it should be negative, have to be profane, vulgar. Yeah. Some, some things should have some types of truth, messages, some just some type of value to take away from it, other than dehumanizing and being negative, basically. Yeah, because for one thing, those are the kind of songs that the ones that leave messages are the ones that last the longest, yes, that stand the test of time the most. Versus, you know, you can have about 75 shaky booty songs, <laughs> and you might, you yeah. might remember. Real four, <laughs> 10 no, years I'm from now. I got on 10 years from now. I'm on drill with your head. I'm going to cut. I got cut. I got all shaded boots off. I'm going to be king of the script club. I'm going to tell the truth. I am going to wish that for you, sir. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, uh, I'm what you call it. I'm a very intricate writer, though. You know what I'm I write more than music too, though. I write more than for just myself. So I be trying to tell for writers the way. Like I, I did start freestyling. <clears throat> Cause when you freestyle, you lose a lot of music too. So, um, it's never written down. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just written. coming off the top of your head. Exactly. So and a lot of it don't make sense. It don't. It don't ever add up. You know what I'm saying? It don't never make. You know what I'm saying? I try, I try to write. Like a, everything's somewhat like a story, you know what I'm saying? It gotta make sense, it gotta tie in. The whole song has to make sense. So, <coughs> that's what type of music I'm ready to hear and come back. Uh-huh. Makes sense. Yeah, so have you uh, ever written anything that's been been recorded yet? yet? Is that your goal? It's about that time. About that time. Have you ever re- written anything for anybody else? Yes, several. Okay. I, I have several friends who were into music. Like there was times where they would just get their feet with as an artist, and like they was recording in my my bedroom. I had a makeshift home studio, or whatever, and they would they were still naive until music writing being like writing lyrics, and I had to help. I gave me help to have. Okay. Things of that nature. So yeah. Did they ever do anything with it? Yeah, they recorded the songs, but I'm not saying like it's it's popular or anything, but it's just the thought that counts, like, because I was never as proficient as I was. I needed help, so I did the same what somebody would do for me. Okay. And plus, you got to get your start somewhere. <clears throat> you got to take those times to get your practice on and can continue to get better and better as you get older and whatnot. Speaking of older, you just had a birthday, didn't you? 
And she was November 18th. I'm okay. Well, happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you were definitely old age 21. Yes. <laughs> Which is why we can legally see it drink together. <laughs> All right, so for all my folks, <laughs> you know, my tagline is wine and words. I ain't even gonna lie, I didn't even feel like doing wine today. Did wine on uh, Thanksgiving, that was enough. So today, we're drinking, oops, let me bring it to the king. camera. Turn it around so you can almost see the margaritas. Yes, and it's love so margarita and metaphor. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Not a metaphor today. Oh, I was just to read a metaphor, but nope. <laughs> <laughs> so the metaphor is you didn't want wine today. Oh. <laughs> All alcohol works the same. Right. Don't matter how you take it in. <laughs> so when you were nine and you decided to start writing, what made you decide um, to start writing music? Like, cause I would like really like rhyme in front of my brothers and sisters. They'd be like, "Why don't you write down music? Why don't you just try to do music?" Cause I used to speak in front of the church. Like I used to read skip scriptures, do <coughs> um, Easter poems, things of that nature. I can see that. And so they felt as if I should take my my talent to the next level. Like, and I used that as inspiration to start. What I'm, what I'm crafting today. Okay. So, did you have like any um, other artists out there that who like would inspire you to um, to write or <clears throat> that led to the uh, explicit nature of nine year old writing music writing? <laughs> okay. And it's, and it's crazy that you asked that question, but oh, hold on one second. Hey, Marcella. Marcella is one of our um, grind time radio show um, favorite people who always drops in on all of our shows. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> we lit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're lit today. <laughs> okay, but you were saying. Oh, um, oh, I was. Let me see. My question, I believe it was, what? Who? Oh. What has influenced you as a nine-year-old when you started writing music? To write explicit <laughs> music. Who you as a 23 year old? We're starting at age nine. We haven't worked out a way on yet. We're at nine. Because, see, my first thought would be, oh, nine, we're writing an extended version of Old McDonald's or something. <laughs> so, when he said explicit lyrics at the age of nine, I'm like, wow, <laughs> where did that come from and what? I'm almost tempted to say, can you recite one? Because I want to know. I can't remember. <laughs> Mar, you say you, Mar, you remember? I remember my first song I wrote. Oh, no. Why are you trying to take my show? <laughs> Mar, you are the next show, sir. You're the next one, I promise you. I'm counseling. <laughs> no, I ain't canceling. <laughs> I, was I thought she was going to say he was re going he, he was gonna say he was going to uh, repeat your song. <laughs> I was like, what? How do you remember? Exactly, and I don't remember. That was at the age where I had to hide things of those natures from my parents, so. <laughs> I guess you did. <laughs> my mother didn't raise me like that. I'm pretty sure she did. <laughs> yeah, <I had laughs> She's going to be like, I did not raise you to be reading at the age of three for you to get the nine and start writing this stuff right here. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> She's like, I know you're smart, but come on, what? Exactly. I could just imagine because that's what I'd be saying. I'd be like, what? What the? But go ahead. Well, I was actually inspired by several artists. My favorite, Jeezy, and that's that's on the street level, but like mainly Tupac, Prodigy, a, a, a lot of old school rappers like Pimp C, Bun B, um, some more. It's a lot of them. So, like the new wave. Like as as I was coming up, I went around the time I was nine and ten. I would listen to Ti, uh -huh. Jeezy, people like those Gucci Man, uh -huh. and those are somewhat of my idols. Okay. So, in your time of writing and listening to to music, have you found yourself self? Um, Taking a little bit of here or there from the different artists that you that you've um, 
grown up listening to and use that to create your own style? Yes, right now I'm slowly finding myself and I just I just use other people's music as, you know, like stepping stone. Like they help me like think and generate music. If like a rapper, like anybody can make music, but it's like why are you doing music? What what's what's your purpose for doing music? A lot of people can tell you the answer, but the reason why I do music is because it, it uplifts me and it, and it's like food to the soul. Like I can be down all the way down. I'm talking like the center of the earth down. Mm-hmm. I hear some music, like my spirit like instantly rises and that's why I love music. That's why I'm doing music. Okay, it's interesting that you said that because I know the beginning of the show, the song that I was listening to, uh, well, that came on first, Stella by Andreas Wallenweider. I was saying that I could be pissed off, mad, angry, ready to cuss folks yes. out. And I've always known this is um, that song to be one that <clears throat> really helped me like calm down in Wusa. But it wasn't until like one night when I was so mad and my son got in the car and he was like, I'm about to put this song on. <laughs> and I was like, that song ain't gonna do nothing to me. <laughs> and he turned it on and it was like, ah. <laughs> like you said that. It's like that feeding us, it just, it just resonates with something in your soul to the point that you just, ah, and you don't even have to think about it. You know what I'm saying? It's like you can't fight against it. What would be your song? I can't say. It's so many. Right? Oh, he's got a whole album full. Okay. <laughs> like, I can't, like, and it's so crazy. I can't give you one off the top of my head. Wow. But that's okay. That's all right. Well, as long as you got a whole album worth, then you should be good for a minute. All right, what did your Marcella say? Sleepover, the nieces and nephews. So please, what? So please school these knuckleheads on writing music in the music business. Oh, okay. <laughs> she got her nieces and nephews over, so they need some schooling on the music industry and writing music. Okay. Well, I think this young man can um, definitely help them with that. Because, Marcella, you missed this part, and your nieces and nephews can know this. Uh, some things to know about this young man, Smoke. This boy was reading, oh God, at the age of one. He was right, he was walking at six months and he was writing at the age of three and writing explicit lyrics by nine. But anyway, <laughs> no matter, he was writing music. <laughs> so, that's number one. So you're never too young or old to get started. That's that's number one. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. All right, so when it comes to you and um, songwriting, do you have anything in particular that inspires you most? Or have yeah. What do you what do you find as inspiration for whatever you decide to write? Is it something that's going on? Is it something personal? Is it just the track itself? Okay. It's, it's several things like my personal endeavors that I overcame. Um, just like well, I, like people who, who love me, like who love smoking and who know smoke is talented, like. That's my drive. Like they make smoke be smoke. Like they make smoke like come out. Uh-huh. And so, with while making music, and it's time to record. Another thing, like I have people around me who who motivates me and give me the special juice that I need to be smoke and let smoke out. Like this specific person is Mun. Like. Oh, I'm just being real, bro. Like you bring a lot out of me when when it come down to music making. You inspire me, like you make me, like you push me to do better. Like it's several times I have wrote in a verse and you told me to my face, like it was trash. You can do better than that. Like where are these words that you always speaking on a daily basis? Like where's this freestyle? Where's this form of rap that you that you love and and you you do all the time? So. Yeah, that's about it. Well, that's good. You got somebody that pushes you like that because everybody needs that. I mean, I'll say for myself as a writer, 
when I first wrote my first story and <laughs> and I um, shared it with family. Lady Kane was the one who read, was the first to ever read anything that I wrote. And I remember I had wrote all these pages, typed them all up on the laptop and everything. And I went and was like, oh, I haven't finished my book. Hey, you gotta read this. She ain't making past chapter three. <laughs> Yes. She's making past chapter three. And that's okay because you know what? I've always viewed her as being my biggest critic because I write um, romance. Okay. But I'm more of a fiction romance, and there is a difference. Um, I'm not that sappy contemporary romance. Okay. That kind of a deal. I'm more of the keeping it real and really talking about relationships and issues and the growth that people go through. Yes. That is form, and romance is a part of it. That's what I focus on more women's fiction. So it wasn't until I had, because that was like 2009 when I had did that. Um, it wasn't until a couple of years of giving up, walking away, taking a few little classes, reading a hell of a lot of books, <laughs> and doing research, studying, and then scrapping my original idea and coming back and doing it all again, that I wrote some chapters and then went and gave it to her. Um, and this was after she gave me the feedback. Like you're saying, mine gave you feedback. It was actually um, Lady Kane and Tate. Both of them gave me back feedback. And I listened and, like I said, did all the work and whatnot. So when I took her to chapters again, and I was like, please check this out. Let me know. And I was like, let me go downstairs. <laughs> she probably going to come say the same thing again because she hates romance. She does not like reading romance. And I'm asking her to read something and tell me, critique it. <laughs> it's something she don't like. And when she came downstairs, she was like, where's the rest of it? I was like, what? You actually like that? She's like, yeah, this is good. Like, where's the rest of it? It was like, oh, okay, let me get you the rest. <laughs> okay. So since then, she has always been um, my biggest person that I rely on when I'm really trying to know if something is working. Because she is not going to keep, she is not going to hold back. She's going to keep it really real. And I'm like, if I learn from that first book. If I can convince her and she likes it and she doesn't really like this genre, then she anybody else who actually likes the genre should should, you know, should go for it. That's a, so that's, that's a key component in handling business in the in the music business because you have to have a support system that's gonna keep it real yep. with you. Yep. Yeah, support system, you. definitely. Your support, but your support, you can have a regular group. People have yes men and they support so Yeah, you don't need people just gonna say no, yes to everything. No, you need somebody who's gonna legit let say, hey, you can do way better than this. Mm -hmm. And I'm not gonna accept this out of you, and there ain't no way, no how. Yeah, it's those people that push you that make you the make you be the best that you can be. Yeah. Not the ones that just sit around and just say, like you were saying, the yes men people. Yeah, we well, need no yes men. <laughs> So um, I think okay, we, we got to that. But I was saying too. Um, so you, I know you mentioned that you also grew up loving to read. Excuse me. Wow, fear. Loving to read books. Um, what type of books did you like reading growing up? I like, like I really like fiction. Ah, what type of fiction? Like mystery, science yes, fiction. All of those. Oh, look, I love. That. Who's your favorite mystery writer? I, I don't have one. Just like the I just like I just like to read them. But when we was in school, we used to I, our goal was to read like two, one or two books a month. Uh -huh. And we have to do a weekly reading log. Uh -huh. And um, I read a lot of books from the author Sharon. What is it? I can't remember her name, but it was a lot of books like for kids and teenagers. Uh -huh. I read a lot of her, her book, a series of good. And being that I work in a library, for some reason I'm like, I think I know who you already said, but I can't think of the author's I, name either. Me neither. It's <coughs> but me, as like while I'm growing now, I want to get into more conscious readings, like. Enlightenment things of those nature. I'm actually starting reading on the uh, the laws of power. Forty eight laws of power. Yes, I'm trying to master those. Okay. And I'm really trying to just spread my horizon on a lot of things. Like I want to read some of your your oh. personal accounts, like for real. Hey, like, I'm I'm open to a lot of readings. Okay. 
<laughs> well, hey, that would be much appreciated. I will tell you, one of the best reviews I ever got is on Amazon was from a male reader. No lie. <laughs> it was from a male reader. Which is hilarious because um, the uh, story, my first book that I wrote, because, okay, so like with me, what I write, like I said, I write women's fiction. Mm -hmm. Um, which is basically kind of like romance, it's kind of contemporary romance, really more women's fiction, but I also deal with interracial romance. Because again, I'm just like, you know, keeping it real. And with my first book that I wrote, it deals with um, a black and white interracial romance and just the realities of the situation. You know, you got two different people from two different sides of the United States. You got one side, um, she was from black woman from North Carolina, you know, how it is over here on this side. You know, folks do be kind of looking at you kind of a little sideways when you end up talking about interracial, well, when you're actually in an interracial relationship, whether they say something out loud or they're not, or they, you're going to get some eyes looking at you. Ain't no telling how you're going to take it, but you know what they thinking, but you're going to get somebody looking at you, even in 2017. Yes, um, and that book was published in 2012. Um, <clears throat> and then this is a white guy from California, and the story takes place in California. So it was just interesting that, um, and I will say the person, I don't really know the person who wrote this review. I just knew of him as being another author that as I had was going about my um, publishing and um, networking through circles on Facebook and stuff like that. I knew this guy as a black man is also an author who was in the interra interracial relationship himself. Mm -hmm. So for him to read the book and be able to connect and identify with some of the things that were going on in the story and for, write, for writing the review that he did, that, you know, how you go on, on Amazon, people can rate reviews, you know, if it was helpful or whatever. And for, like I said, that book came out in 2012 and it's getting ready to be 2018. It's still the top rated book review. I'm like, hey, that's why I'm like, one of my best reviews came from a man. <laughs> Cause he, and it's a very long review. He keeps it really real, you know. So I'm like, to me, that, you know, that's the kind of thing that I like doing. You know, I don't, I don't like doing typical. And I will hope to say my writing in a way is like you were saying, it like, you know, it's not that typical um, romance writer stuff. You know, meet the millionaire. You know, the down of her look about dang that homeless woman. <laughs> it gets six up out of me. <laughs> who's got all these weird, 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 freaky sex habits. You know what I'm saying? It's not 50 shakes of crap. <laughs> Which is so funny because I do have people come and ask me, so, do you write like 50 shades of gray? And I'm like, no. <laughs> so, no, I don't. There's no whips and chains. <laughs> There's romance and sex involved, but none of that. But it's so funny, um, since we're talking about words and the use of words, um, being that there's so many different types of, of stories out there, I like and I pride myself on being able to write a scene that uses words to help you visualize and get the same feeling that you would get if you were watching a movie or if you were reading a book that had like all the X-rated words in it, because I stay away from those. Because when you're using words, there's a way to choose your words wisely to to really write. And that's one of the things that I love about um, music and being here at the Grind Factory and being able to look at you guys as you guys come in and sit down and write. Because even though I am a writer, I don't write songs. So I've been told, well, if you, write a, if you can write a book, you can write some lyrics. I'm pretty sure I can. <laughs> I have not stepped into that world to even try it just yet, <laughs> but I know the amount of work that it takes me to create a 300 page novel and the amount of decisions it takes to write certain scenes and believe it or not. And it was so funny because I would have never thought about this until like I was saying I was doing research and it was one of the things that I read was that writing a love scene is the equivalent of writing an action scene. In like any other book, because it's really you think about it, it's action, it's sex, but it's action. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, okay. So then you really got to think really hard yes, <laughs> yes, yes. about how to describe certain certain things. Yeah, because not only using the right word choice, 
you got to make sure this stuff literally literally lines up. So it's like if you write a fight scene, it's like he took his right arm punch. You know what? Yes. You gotta you gotta, but you can't be so technical that he took his right arm, balled him into his fist, and punched him in the nose. His nose went to the you know <laughs> you can't be that technical <laughs> because then it's no longer entertaining. It's like I read the technical novel. This sucks. <laughs> but you got to know how and when and how to do it. So, like I said, in order to tell a full-fledged story in 300 words, I know how long it usually takes me, and it usually takes me about a good year to um, outline a story, create the characters, <sighs> write the story in a rough draft, edit it, the hell out of it. <laughs> get frustrated, walk away, come back, so finally get it to, to bed readers and stuff like that. So to sit there and watch you guys literally spend, I know here at the Grind Factory, now I've been blogging about this on the Grind Factory's um, blog on the Grind, um, Grind Factory's website about watching all the different lock-ins that's been going on. Like you've been around for a couple yes, of lock-ins, right? Yes, and just seeing how the team connects with that energy and it literally is energy in the room. I mean, I don't know how else to describe it. You just have to be here to, to know it. And it's like, you just get wrapped up and absorbed up into the energy. Like, I swear to God, I'll come here and there'll be days like, if you just had a camera on me the entire time I'm here, it doesn't matter what I'm doing. I could be writing a um, blog post or doing whatever I'm doing or just sitting here just watching. And I swear my head and my foot just, from the time I walk in, it's so like there's music playing. I'm just wrapped up and just. I'm not writing anything lyrically, but I'm just all up into the beat and everything. So to sit there and watch you guys literally take, like I said, the grind factor, the way that their the gears are so greased so well and everybody works so well together. Yes. It's like they can turn on a track. Everybody be like, oh, man, I like that. And then it's like somebody will come up with a general idea. Yeah, let's go with that. You know, next thing you got the chorus. This person over here writing his lit, his his. 16 or whatever this person over here writing this and then an hour and a half later they in the booth recording the first takes and it's like wow this is wow <laughs> How, and, and you can tell and, and the fact that the words that are being used which is my whole point I just took a long way getting here <laughs> I'm just so impressed about how the words can be put together to take to tell a whole story in like 45 seconds because if you're sharing a song with somebody else yes, the song yes, is usually yes. about three minutes long and you got at least three people on it you probably got about 45 seconds to a minute maybe maybe mm -hmm. might even a minute might actually be pushing it but to be able to get together together whatever story you're trying to tell in that amount of words and then get it out there and be ready to spit it like that i am just like so yeah, I can write 300 words because I got plenty of time to work with that. Y'all want me to work? Yes. <laughs> I am so impressed. So like, didn't get a chance to make it out to that battle that you went out to. But I do remember being here and Lady T Lady Kane asked you to recite your lyrics or whatnot. And you was just all into it. I was so impressed. Yes, like, I was like, oh, look at what, that. And what's so crazy, like... That was my first battle. I remember. And like me too. And you look so confident. Yes, yeah, like just I, sitting in the chair, just, just you was in it. You, I mean, I don't even think you even missed the what. I was like, God damn, you I was good. Just, I was ready. I was ready. <laughs> See, that's that all the years of writing that you've been doing. Now you get to the point to where you're really ready to get out there and start exactly. using it for your own benefit. So how does it? Hold on. You know what? Before I ask that question. Let me see. I see Marcella has made another comment. She said, when you write, do you have the music to your words? I mean, the music, yeah, to your words. And do you save lyrics and use them for other songs? Have you created lyrics for just listening, from just listening to a song? Ooh, good question. <laughs> Sometimes I write just to write. When I come to to the studio, I write music. But when I'm at home, like it can be something random that can just pop up. I feel like I could just write about it. And I just write. So yes, I can write without without music, without knowing lyrics. Like I know how to structure and put things together. Like I can have an idea from five hours early. Fast forward, I can have a whole song. Like it's just it's just how you put it together. And what was the other question she asked? She was asking, 
do you do you save the lyrics and use them for other songs? Yes, I have did that on um, several songs. Like I recycle lyrics because Mon he helped critique a lot of my <clears throat> my writing because he's older. He has more experience. He's the vet, so a lot of the things that I do create and come up with, they sometimes may be out of like. It don't go with what I what I write, so I improvise and revise what I have. And yeah, I, I save a lot of things. Like some of my music, like some of my songs that are about to be released, those have some recycled lyrics. Like I've been wrote those, so a lot of artists do it, a lot of people do it. It's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, now that's another thing I've noticed about being around the music industry and hearing so many different artists come in. <clears throat> and record different songs. I do know that there are times where just because you record a track does not mean that's going to be one you really going to keep. It yeah. sounds good at the time, but you may come across something better. But that doesn't mean that the words that what you were saying or the message that you were delivering in this particular song can't be used somewhere else. Exactly. So I have heard multiple artists um, have a catalog or just a bunch of songs that they've done over a course of time and you'll every now and again it won't be the entire lyric or like the entire 16 or whatever but it'll be maybe like a certain phrase that i remember specifically in a whole nother song because i really like that song but this could be a whole nother song and it had nothing to do with the other song but the the grouping of the words that for the point in the message that was being told was ties in so it's like hey i can throw it over there but it's not going to be like something that's going to be on the same album that they're going to use again exactly but again you hear that on the radio. That's just a part of artistry. Look, you hear that on the radio because what I can't remember what song it. I don't know the name of this song, but I think it's Cardi B. Um, what's her name? What's, that, what's that little short chick's name? The with Cardi B. Uh, not the but the pre card uh, the pre Cardi B. <laughs> the pre Cardi B. What's her name? I can't remember. You know she uh she the big butt chick. What's her name? Nikki. Thank you, Nikki, Nikki Minaj. And whoever else they recording with right now. But because <laughs> you know Cardi B is like really, really popping there. You can't turn the radio on without hearing at least three songs that she's in right now. I think I heard them say on the radio the other day that three songs that she's on are in like the top yes, top ten or something like that song right has now. Been number one for like the last month, like she has really like broke broke open the floodgates like this like those type of goals i have I'm trying to good goal she is like, yeah what i was gonna say is whatever song that she's in that has Nicki minaj and the other guy in it there is actually one line that she recycled from her one song that she has by herself that's really popular okay. yep and yeah thank you which i'm trying to understand the significance of that name with the song but i'm not even gonna okay i'm not even gonna this yo you know yes oh okay. thank you please explain because okay kodak, people kodak, kodak released a song called no flocking and it's the certain it's like the flow that he uses now he uses now on most of his songs like this what he's famous from from the no flocking okay cardi b used kodak flow on her on that beat so it was not a remix of kodak song it was more like just a flow pattern yes that's all it was oh so that's why it's called that mm -hmm. okay but if you never know but cardi b she named it bodak black she's had she has ties to a gang the bloods mm -hmm. so instead of kodak like with a k because it sounds similar <clears throat> like to a c mm -hmm. like I, even though I'm supposed to be giving out this information, but yeah, she she used the B for Kodak and turned it to Bodak in yellow because she's a yellow bone chick. And Kodak, he's black. Kodak black. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie. I'm gonna have to rewind this later so I can get that again. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, that's that's just cool because then we were just talking about how you know artists can recycle recycle their lyrics if they need me to fit to fit something better because as far as i'm concerned anything that's written is that goes to me because music is basically like a poem and you can put a poem to any words that you want to put a poem that you want to put it to it's just whatever fits the mood or what fits the fits that moment 
So like um like she was asking, all right, so do you listen to music all the time when you write? You said sometimes, right? Yes. And then you had sometimes when you were actually just write off of just an idea but there's not any music. So how do you know when you found the right music to go with something that you've already written? Because I would grab someone like mine or my brother or my sister and I would I would tell them what I wrote, what I came up with, and they'll let me know like what's the su- I I'll tell them the subject or whatever the message I'm trying to get across. And they'll they'll tell me if it matches what I wrote. What about when it comes to finding like a track? Like, you know, you come to the Rhyme Factory, sometimes they just have tracks just, you know, just playing because they're trying to find one that they can catch or whatever. How would you know when you find one like that you that catches you to be like I mean, is there any way that you just know everything that you've written so well to where you hear a track and it's like, you know what? That can go to such a session page, whatever. You pull out your notebook and you're flipping through and, you know, and that matches up or yeah. how does that work for you? Like, I, I can do that. Like, I have several written music that goes along with a lot of the beats and things that they play in the studio. But me, ever since being a member of um, Brian Gang, you know, like being in this environment, like it inspires me, like to do, like to make real music. Like when I come in here, we make I, real music. When right I come here. in here, <laughs> when I come in here, I don't think about Young Thug. I don't think about Michael Jackson. I don't think about nobody. Nobody. I think about me. Like I don't try to do music like anybody. I try to find myself and just make good music. This that be the whole thing. Like. The beat could be suckish as I don't know what, but me, I've learned to make music. Like, music is music, no matter who makes it. And you think about it, music is really the lyrics of the song. Yeah, the rhythm is great, but anytime, you know, if you're listening, unlike like my Andre Bala Wider favorite song in the world that speaks to my soul, which has absolutely no lyrics to it because it's not supposed to. When it comes to songs that actually have lyrics, the best ones are the best that people remember are the songs that are the best written. Not the ones that just always have the repeated, basic, whatever. Unless it's a party song, because let's get real. Party song ain't supposed to do nothing but just be basic and simple. (laughs) To get your party on with. But the ones that people will sit down and... If they're having a good day, they're going to pull that song out. If it speaks to their soul, if they're having a bad day and it speaks to their soul, they'll pull that one out. You know, they mad and they just want to, ah, that's the world, you know. <laughs> they got that song. You know, but it's based on the lyrics of the song because the song is going to be speaking a message that they can relate to and help them work through the situation. So I would say... Um, when you come to the songs you write, what type? I may have already asked, but what type of songs do you do you prefer writing? Is it just based? Do you have any like specific type messages you like gearing toward, or is it just based on your mood for the day, or okay. something you may have read, seen on TV, something going on in the world? Okay, like other than us doing the lock-in, that's when I know I just want to be creative and just make music. I I just I can't say like I just I just go with whatever I feel like something like whatever I attract to that's what I'm going with because like I, I believe in the energies like whatever the, like the frequency is pulling me towards that's what I go towards like I don't try to second guess myself or nothing if I feel as if I should do a love song or I'm going to do just that. I'm, I, nine times out of ten, my mind I already be made up. So if I've been feeling something for two weeks ago and I feel like is it like, when I get to the studio, first chance I get to make some music or be creative again, that's what I'm going to do. Uh-huh. And I'm going to try to perfect it at the same time because my mind is set on it. So nine times out of ten, like, most of the stuff that I do produce, it be based off of what I want to do, like what I'm determined to do. Okay. All right, see, I see Marcel is blowing up the little feed. Keep them rolling. I love the question. <laughs> okay. All right, so we read that one, read that one. All right, it is, oh, it's 
Oh, I think this supposed to be. Is it hard to find your own style of telling a story or lyrics? Yes, it is. Like I find it, I find it difficult when I have so much like to write about and say because I have to take out certain things and you know just not be as vivid as I want to be. But at the same time, like I feel as if like it's shaping me and molding me to be better. Like of the circumstances I'm a part of. Like if I don't have a lot of how would you say this? Content to like generate. Mm-hmm. I, I can't I can't do too much. Like I just need some type of oh. motivation. Okay, that's what I was gonna say. You talking about if you haven't gotten enough inspiration. Yes. Haven't been around enough to inspire you enough to be kind of hard. So I guess it will almost be like writer's block. Yes, I, I get it a lot. Like, and I have to admit that, like, I don't, I, I can, like, write a song in an hour, but it wouldn't be as good or well thought. Like, I have to do some real deep thinking. Like, mm-hmm. And when I do the deep thinking, like, it shows. Like other than rushing and just trying to make a song, I can feel. It. I definitely understand. It, cause Lord yeah. knows, I like I'm not that that right. it's, it's not easy. It's not. It's not. It's, it's not easy to. Okay, I do things abnormally. Right, like I sit there and write a well thought song in an hour. Mm-hmm. Concept, everything on point. Mm-hmm. Go in there and record it. Thirty minutes. That's unheard of, you know what I'm saying? I mean, telling people, don't look at what I do and ask, what am I doing? <laughs> look at what I'm doing and just try to catch something. Mm-hmm. You catch something, you're going to get a little speed yourself. Yeah. But in my mind, I'm thinking, this is what information I need. It's like, okay, you might write a book mm-hmm. about a certain topic, mm-hmm. interracial relationship. Mm-hmm. That, and that was me. I would take everything that I know already about interracial relationships mm-hmm. and write half the book about what I already know. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take time to take a little bit of knowledge about that, what I don't know mm-hmm. and incorporate it and make the rest of the book. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's going to equal out to a whole new book. Mm-hmm. So if I do a song about writing music, I'm going to start out writing. I'm going to write down, okay, count bars. Da 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 Nah, it's no shame. That's that's really, that's really a lot of people problem. They they really 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 overthink it. Oh, I have to be so. Less is more. A lot. That like, is true. You can say so much in one word. Yeah, I've learned that about writing too, and it's so funny that you and say that. Music is it's harder for you to express in one word than what we can because we can actually put an expression behind it. I can put some extra uh, on how I say it. Yeah, it's, yeah it's the delivery it. of the line that makes it. You know what I'm saying? Somebody's yep. reading your thoughts and so you have to put an adjective right there to describe how deeply you feel about it. You know? That's one of the biggest things I've learned from writing, writing books is that you have to learn there is a difference between just writing and like you said, just explaining everything and using 12 lines it really shows the creativity and the ability of the writer to take 12 lines and reduce it to like at least five. Yeah. And be still descriptive. And still get vivid. the whole point across because I, I noticed that when, like when I edit, like when I first write my first drafts of any of any story, anything, anything, I'll just put everything that comes to mind just how I see it. But the um, mm-hmm, but it's when I get to the editing process when you go back you be like, I right, I don't need all that. And then you realize I can cut all that down to slop. Like right now, now I'm, I am gonna throw some shade at smoke. <laughs> Come on with it, because this is turning to a learning session too. <laughs> when smoke writes, 
he has a tendency to to get caught up in his thoughts instead of just spewing it down on the paper first. Like write some shit on the paper. Like write it down. Mm -hmm. Write down everything. And then put together something. You know what I'm saying? That's how you structure it. Before you know it, it's been five minutes gone by and you didn't wrote half a verse in five minutes. You don't wrote eight bars in five minutes. So it's that concept of throw it all up on paper yeah, and then you go and then you go back and, and, and get what you have. Yeah. Like, I don't just sit there and just oh, oh the don't throw it. Yeah, because you'll sit there and be lost forever in 25 days trying to figure out <laughs> how to write. If on the first pass, you're trying to come up with the exact way you want to write it. No, you get your thoughts out. I get might, it all on paper. Then you go the, back I and write it. I might write the delivery to my, to my verse just so I know how to build all the way up to it. You see what I'm saying? That's going to make it easy because I already got the end. I got to build up to this. So funny how much this so like like okay so again me writing books I will oftentimes out like for me coming up with ideas for books usually come from like random thoughts conversation I may have had with somebody seeing something on TV that may have happened and it's just the idea and the concept of okay so that's what happened with this particular situation but what if I took put pull this person from this walk of life, this person from this walk of life, they ain't got nothing to do with that, and put them in and, you know, mix it all up or whatever. And a lot of times I'll get, like, a pivotal scene that comes to mind, not necessarily the ending, but it'll be that pivotal scene that's, like, um, act three of the story that's, like, something really major that happens. Like, I've got one that's been going around in my head for the last couple of weeks that has the, with a whole nother book, and I'm like, okay, and it's so because every time I get in the car or I'm having time alone by myself, I'll pick right up in the same spot, like watching the DVD. Right. And it's like, okay, so this is what was happening. This is what was happening. But then I, it's still like, this works. But now yes. let's go back to the beginning and let's figure out how how these people came that, about. That's conditioning. You know what I'm saying? You've got your brain to yep. go right back to where you were so you won't forget. Mm -hmm. But with, with rappers, <clears throat> I say it's it's that's the only thing that's probably be different. Folks need to start writing when things happen, like exactly when it happened. Mm -hmm. Like when this should go down, I need to make a song about this. Yes, I, you know I need to make a song. I, I feel some type of way. I need to make a song about this. You know what I'm saying? I do a lot of it. You know what I'm saying? My mama just made me mad. I'm gonna make a song about why she made me mad. Or <laughs> I see a pretty girl at train station. I'm gonna make a song about this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I do that sometimes. I write. I write lyrics. I, I remember lyrics. You know what I'm saying? Just like I would say, I remember my first song. Uh -huh. That's it. my memory. Of what made me advanced at, at the rap part. You know what I'm saying? See, my memory don't do too much of nothing for the business, but the rap part, my <laughs> mem my memory helps me a lot because I don't have to. Usually, if I write a verse. I can remember it. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm all over what I didn't wrote and what I got to write it. But when it comes to, like I said, the technical side, it's like, oh, oh God. Oh, <laughs> the business? The yeah, business side? I thought I did all the oh, work. Oh, God. <laughs> I could have sworn I did all the work. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> all right, let me get back to your question. Marcel's got these more questions. Okay, so she says, do you play an instrument? I used to play the, um, the trumpet when I was in third grade, and I gave up on that. Trumpet in the third grade? Yes, I did. Well, at least you made it past the little cut zoom things or whatever the little things they give you in like the fourth, fifth grade when they try to introduce everybody to music. Mm -hmm. It's like, all right, everybody, let's play this. Everybody listen to them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I tried. I couldn't get past it. I let it go. <laughs> I let that little mess go. <laughs> so how long did you play? I played for like a year all the way up to my fourth grade year. I just stopped. Because I was doing other things like beta, like the extracurricular activities. Like. Okay. So music did just do it for you. I mean, we're playing an instrument doesn't do it for you. I understand. But I'm saying, like, I still love the melody that comes from instruments. Because, like, I do music. I have to rap, rap on the beat that, that is derived from instruments so uh -huh. like my little sister she plays the flute like i'm in love with that like oh cool that's like a symphony that i i would never get tired of i love the flute and i never played the flute so here's a question then weird question mm -hmm. hey why not 
Do you ever take any of the melodies that you've heard from the flute and use that as part of maybe something that inspires you for something that you're writing? That's a good question. I, I haven't thought that way, but I will. Because you may have done it and not even realize it. Exactly. Especially if it's something that you love so much, you may have heard the melody in your head and not even been paying attention. Mm-hmm. You're too busy trying to write. I bet you have. Probably so. You're going to go back home and look at some of your lyrics that you got written down and be like, let me see. This. Oh, man, I did do that. <laughs> All right, and she asks, where is the best place for you to write? Wow. Another significant question. Like me, out of all honesty, I need my space. That's the only way smoke's going to be created. Well, slash that. <clears throat> I can be creative around other people. I feel as if like my gift, my talent is sacred, so I need to, I need to do that by myself. I need to generate my music by myself. I need to perfect my craft by myself. Like I'm not being <coughs> selfish. I mm-hmm. just I just need my space when it comes to making music. So do you like post yourself up in your room? You just go for a walk? Closet. Like, Closet. Oh, yes, I need space. I will go. I will walk wow. down the street away from a crowd of people. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Recite some lyrics. Write this. Yes. I, okay. I have to do that. The closet's a new one. And that's actually that's the place where I had my first um studio. Was it in the studio. closet? Yes. We had the closet. booth in the closet? Yes. Sweet. Yes. That's how it works. That's good. I understand. I could because I'm I'm like that too. I used to have an office mm-hmm. in one of the houses that we stayed in or so I know I like my space and I like um you know, being able to go there. Things have changed over the years. Like when I first started writing, I was a stay-at-home mom. Now I work full time. So I don't have the access to just like space like that so much anymore or really time. (laughs) The time to be in that space to really focus like that. So my writing has over the last couple of years, because since I've been working, I've published two books while working. And it was a great, Whew, way oh my god it was it was time management like a mug like i would be at lunch and everybody knew leave mj alone because she got her headphones on and her paper her, well she's got a notebook out no time to right now because she got i got one freaking hour <laughs> to get as much done as i possibly can or there's even times when we have downtime at work i'll be like i'm trying to get it in <laughs> while well, i can that's that's where i am now but if, if, I know for me, if I don't have, oh shoot, back in the day, I remember I used to walk, um, take the laptop and, and everything and be writing while at the wash house. It's, I ain't even going to lie. Right? Yeah, it used to be the wash house or I would take the kids to the library and be like, hey y'all, we're going to be here for a while. Y'all know what y'all need to do over there, get your books, do whatever. <laughs> Mom's sitting up here on this side with the headphones on. I've done it at bars and mobiles. <laughs> Hell, I have even, and this is going to be so much harder, you're going to break up. And like I said, now for me, when I'm writing and I see scenes in my head that I haven't had time to sit down and write, I'm always constantly replaying them in my head like a DVD. It's like, okay, this is this is the, this is where they're at. This is who it is. This is what they're wearing, if that even matters. This is the conversation. And I will watch the characters have the conversation in my head. And then I'll like go from the beginning of the scene to the end of the scene. It's like... Didn't like the way that worked. Go back. Let's start all over again. Let's change this character to saying this and blah, 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 blah. Okay, so here's the funny part. You're going to crack up. I was at a doctor's appointment at Emory one time. And I was leaving my doctor's appointment. I was editing my third book. And I was trying to work my, <laughs> manage my time to work my, um, so that when I got home after driving like 30 minutes to get back to the house, I knew exactly what I wanted to write. Oh my God. So it was a love thing that I was having a problem with. And I literally sat there and was rewriting this scene in my head um, several times that I got stuck in the in the I got stuck in the parking lot at Emory. Because you know they got like five, six rows. Mm-hmm. And if you miss the wrong turn, by the time you get down to like double three, if you miss the turn, mm-hmm. then go to the exit, you'll be cycling all the way. <laughs> I was so in my head about this thing that I was rewriting 
said, I'm just driving and driving. And at one point, I was like, God damn, I didn't pass that car. How many times have I passed that car? Where's the exit? <laughs> so have you ever had one of those moments to where you're just wherever you are and you're, you know, you've gotten caught into the creative loop and you just kind of forget about something. <laughs> Mine isn't as creative as yours, but like, I have caught myself several times. I get a red like while I'm driving my car and my phone right near. It's like, uh -huh. yes, but that's crazy. And the lights are gray, somebody had to blow the horn. <laughs> See, I've done that too, because I used to, I used to, um, write a little bit on my phone or at least use the voice record. <laughs> See, so I'll be mean, like the, the crazy lady at, at the light, they sit there blowing like, why is this lady sitting here talking to her phone? <laughs> but she's not driving. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm messing with mine. I text and so Text and oh Lord. Okay. I'll write a whole song on my way to the video. <laughs> yeah, he, he did talk, put on the gas. Okay, I missed one of uh, Marcella's questions. She said, what genre do you listen to? I listen to rap, hip-hop, classic, pop, R&B, sometimes rock. Like, I'm open to a lot of genres of music, but I really prefer rap and hip hop. That's what I do. Rap and hip hop, and that's what you do. All right. And then her other question is she said, Closet is an old trick. Do that when I create music with my clarinet or whatever instrument I choose to blow. <laughs> All right, uh, Marcel, don't be trying to get, get dirty in a slick way with them words. I see you try to have some wordplay on him. <laughs> You cut that too much. Oh, she gonna read. Me. Oh, she she have a party team withdrawal. <laughs> <laughs> she is trying to read. Me. <laughs> All right, and then she says, "Have you ever look or hear your lyrics and say, did I really write that? It doesn't sound like me.'" It's crazy that you say that all the time. Like I don't, I don't be ashamed of myself to go as hard or be as fluid or good as I am, but it comes with work, like being confident, having faith, like it's a lot. I know I feel that way about myself sometimes. I read stuff like I think I was saying earlier, I'm in the process right now of re-editing my first book. And since I wrote the first, I've published four more, so I have five published books in all. Mm -hmm. My writing style has definitely changed over the years um, because I'm going to tell you, for me, I'm one of those people who sometimes you'll ask authors, oh, you know, they'll be like, oh, I've been writing since kindergarten, high school, middle school. I was, you know, that was never me. I was, I have never, ever been a writer. Reader? Heck yeah. <laughs> I read like a mug, man. That could see I'm the only child too who grew up in the country with the cows and the chickens and everything. But anyway, so I've read a lot. <laughs> I spent a lot of time by myself reading a hell of a lot. So um, reading has always been my thing. Storytelling, never. So it's just interesting that after some events in life happened, I got drawn to the idea of writing. And that has been my one passion since then. And it's just so funny that um, when I put my first book out, like I said, I had to learn how to write by reading books about writing and um, reading some of my favorite authors and seeing what they did and how they told their story and having to go through the whole learning how to tell my own. And it literally took me about three, four years before I, from going from the point of actually learning how to write to actually publishing my first book and that's three that's like three to four years of working on the exact same story that was rewritten literally three different times and i'm not talking about edits i'm talking about like the characters evolved immensely <laughs> from the first version of the story i mean i'm talking about name changes uh age progression <laughs> it's like all kinds of stuff just happened but it's funny because I look back at that and like I'm doing it now since I've grown so much since then and in my ability to write 
several things that I've noticed about myself is number one, I've learned to use less words. Like we talked about how you had that 12, <laughs> them 12 sentences that you can reduce to like four or five to get the whole point across. So as I'm going back and I'm re-editing this first book for republishing, I am going through and deleting and changing all the stuff that over the last five years since that book has come out and I've learned so much that every time I read it, I'm like cussing myself out like, did I write that? Why? I've learned so much. Why am I? So now I feel like I'm having to re-edit the book to catch it up to my caliber of writing. <laughs> that makes sense. Yes. So I'm like, I got to make this storytelling flow match pattern match with book number five. Because this ain't doing it for me now, writers. Are talking, they, I mean, readers, they don't care. They love it. They don't see it like the writer does. Exactly. Because, ah, good God. So that brings me to this. So in, in the lyrics and the songs that you've ever, that you've written, have you ever come across lyrics and you're like, why the H she why the hell did I write that? Because it's like, oh God, scrap that. Let me I can take this concept and do it again. And that's what like improvising stories like with you. Like sometimes you have to reread, you have to go be your own content just so you can know if it's right yourself, like or you can let somebody else hear it and for their um opinion. So so, okay, so when you're talking about um, mine and then some of your siblings, when they've read some of your stuff and told you, like, mm, nah, this ain't gonna work, you can do better. How do, how do you deal with that? Do you just do you go through the pissed off mode or do you just go straight to the. I mean, not saying that you won't do it, but don't you sometimes feel like, yeah, deep, deep down it hurts, but I would rather hear from them personally than to hear from a. You know, it's for somebody is on a bigger level. You get what I'm saying? So get it right now, so I won't have to get it right later. So you had to grow that thicker skin. Yes. Like within the artist, like that's something you're gonna have to do. Like you're gonna have to be open to critiquing. Like people, like what you may feel that's that's good or you know perfect. That's false in reality because people have their own opinion. Like I'm just being real, but yeah, so gotta be open to those type of things. Like that, that helped me grow as an artist. Like every time somebody tell me, bro, that was wrong. No, nah, it don't go right. Now. Put this this, put this here, put this there. Like those things help. Like and I don't forget. Like that helps me as an artist. Okay. So now let's get to uh, battle rap. Cause like I was saying, I did hear you. Didn't get a chance to see you live that night, but did get to hear you. You wrote those. You wrote everything you had. You had spit that night, right? I don't remember all of them. Okay, I'm, I don't remember it. <laughs> wait, wait, wait till those clips drop. It's like I don't remember it, but I remember that I was definitely impressed with the pattern. Cause see, it's like. When you listen to battle rap, it's like listening to a song for the first time on the radio. You ain't gonna remember all the words. You gotta hear that several times. But since I know I only had heard it that one time, I know I was just impressed with your delivery and the confidence that you had, and and the, um, your word choices. Again, I can't remember what you were saying, but I just know you had a couple times. Where I was like, dang, because <laughs> I ain't even gonna lie. Since being around here. And the Grindhouse Battle League and listening to mine and others spit and do battle rap and stuff like that. Battle rap was not something that I really was around and knew a lot about. So I've learned a lot since being here. And one of the biggest things has been training my ears. <laughs> you have to train your ears to listen to battle rap. Some bars. Exactly. And I feel like I'm finally getting there so I can appreciate battle rap. Because before it was like, what? And everybody going, ooh, dang, what bars? And it's like, I don't know what they really just said because my brain hasn't processed it just yet. <laughs> but my brain is finally learning to catch up to process what's being said within that two or three seconds before the next bar drops. And it's like, so now I can literally be like, dang, and ooh, somebody get ready to get punched in mouth for saying it. <sighs> yeah, it's a better up. Like, like, the culture, like, it's so... I can't find the word, but like, you have to be a listener. Like, you have to understand lyrics. Like, 
Because some people who do better rap, they are pure lyricists mm-hmm. but can't make music. Yeah. And some better rappers are musicians but can't write lyrics. Mm-hmm. You know? So, like, it's a talent. It's an honor to be a better rapper. Like, a lot of people can't, can't be a better rapper. But me, I'm just growing. Like, I'm going to be better. I, I know so. I'm going to be great. I have a lot of good mentors. Mon, he was one of them. Like, he showed me the ropes. Like, he's the, he's the reason why I stepped out and did my first battle. Like, I remember. I was so shy. Like, I was scared. I was petrified. I thought I was going to get demolished. But came closer to the date of my my first battle. Like, it's just something like that just snapped, clicked in my head. Like, become like, I became confident. Like, shit, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it with full potential. Like, so I got out there and did my thing. Like, yeah, I my, you did really good too. Yes, like but the, first when they the, came back, the it was like smoke. His yeah. first time, like what? The crowd reaction, like it, <laughs> it, it plays a big part of my motivation. Like that love, like I never got that love. So like, so shit, I'm gonna keep going. That's all the motivation you need is you need yes, that. You be yes. feeding off that motiv- uh feeding off that crowd love. Mm-hmm. Do something to you. <laughs> All right. So let's see. Um, but do you have any other any battle rap schedule that you preparing for right now or not yet. I'm I'm gonna get some fight. I'll let you know. I inform Okay, because you know Grind Factor will definitely be shouting yes, all that stuff they, they, out. They, they my biggest support team. All right. And here's a now we're on to the random cra- crazy questions. Uh, let me make sure we got our Marcellus. Uh, have you ever? Okay, now we did that one. Best place, right? Or are you like this? No, I think we got caught up on all her questions. Okay, so here's the crazy questions now. Now, <laughs> trust me, they're not that crazy. I'm, yeah, I'm creative, but I'm not always that creative. All right. So <laughs> now, some years ago, when I was uh, first writing, I used to. Well, I have a website. And I sat down one of these days when I was at the library, supposed to be writing, but it's so funny that part of my writing journey was creating a website and blogging because the blogging was a way for me to learn a different kind of style of writing. Um, and I had wrote this blog post about wearing a, being an author and feeling like I was, you know, riding the crazy train. Shut up, Mon, don't say that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> And wearing a straight jacket. Because it's, it's so funny because to me, all people who have that creative spirit and the talent and the ability, I don't care if you're doing music, writing books, just creating tracks or whatever, even actors or whatnot, anybody that has the ta- that has the spirit to put into creativity there's some form of crazy about you yes, it is. because it's number one this life is not one that's easy to just be like i'm just gonna go sit down and do it and it's like no struggle yeah. because you know like we've been saying this evening it takes hard work it takes dedication it takes needing to have that time alone stepping away from other people being yes. in your own zone not being bothered you know what I'm saying? Great. And, you know, having that thick skin where you feel it and hear that what you wrote is the good, and then somebody else come be like, nah, it ain't, and then you got to figure out whether they telling you the truth or not. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of passion that goes into being that form of crazy. And yes. it is so funny because when you, uh, you know, as I've talked to different authors over the years and get to know different people, a lot of people come from different places as to the reason why they've gotten to whatever form of creativity they have. And a lot of times it's not always from the happiest place in the world. You know, a lot of people who are on this bus, <laughs> this creative bus, we'll call it the creative bus, not the crazy bus, but the creative bus, um, have had some form of pain or hurt or something that has been the catalyst and the motivation to what put them into. Because I know for myself, there were some things going on in my life that that motivated me and put me into this knee and realm of being of writing. And part of it was nearly dying from um, from having been in Emory for like two weeks from having a stroke. And I was in my thirties at that time. I was too young to even be having this kind of issues, but I almost died. <clears throat> and part of my recovery 
came came from being able to take some of that pain and whatnot and the fact that when I tell people that, hey, yes, I was paralyzed on this side of my body for several days and people look at me like, but you were too young. Yeah, I was. I was 32 at the time. I was really way too young. But it happened. But now here I am and something about that has changed me to the point that, like I said, I used to read a lot, but now I don't read that much because I don't have time because I'm writing. And a lot of times I seem to write my best when I'm having a bad day sometimes. <laughs> sometimes when I'm having a good day, I can't write because I'm too freaking happy. <laughs> that just, that makes, I mean, that's kind of crazy. And it's not to say that I only write when I'm bad or upset, but it's just a difference. I've noticed that there is a different kind of motivation and mental energy that goes into my writing on days that I'm not necessarily having the best day and I'm needing to work through some things emotionally. Than necessarily on the good day. So, do you ever? So, which, which is why this is the special bus. Because, as I say, you know, you get on the special bus when you don't want to go to the hospital mm -hmm. and have them give you medication. So, a lot of crazy. I mean, I'm sorry. A lot of creative people are avoiding our medicated states by <laughs> using our using our using that creativity <laughs> in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> so, how does that work for you, or does that work for you? <laughs> well, like, I don't know, like, I have a fortified mind, like, sometimes I try to, you know, look past, like, all my endeavors, like, I use it as motivation, like, I, like I keep saying, like, like I, I've had several endeavors in life, like, this is completely, like, knocked me down, mm -hmm. like, whereas, like, I wouldn't even think about music or writing music or just picking myself as an artist. Like, I would go do things that would harm me. So, I found music as a scapegoat mm -hmm. and writing music as a scapegoat to, like, to cope with the things that I've been through. And, like, sometimes it, it inspires, like, my creativity mm -hmm. at times. So I, I I try to like be strong like when it comes to things of that like because I know you only live once. Why live your life always down and not doing anything? Why not be creative and be happy and be productive? Mm -hmm. And the beauty of it is is when you able to take that creative side and create something that other people can relate to or appreciate. <clears throat> what may have been maybe something that was a form of healing or coping or dealing with you because somebody else's passion or something that encourages and helps them. But the beauty of it is, is like you said, you only live once, but that'll be your legacy, whatever it is that you do music books and that's one of those things that i kind of forget about sometimes because sometimes i'm just like okay i've got some books please read my story i hope you enjoy it <laughs> but because i'm trying to put a message into my stories subliminally subliminally you cannot say that word too fast right <laughs> <laughs> subliminally yeah see it doesn't come out right be like that. If you watch Harry Potter, yes. you remember that scene in Harry Potter we got <laughs> we got in the uh, in the uh, whatever that thing was, and he was supposed to say diagonally. Uh -huh. No, he was supposed to say diagon alley. See, words matter. Yes, it <laughs> words really do matter. He was supposed to be given the name of a place, diagon alley. Drop the little magic powder and poof. Well, get up on the other side. He said diagonally. So he came out in Diagon Alley just diagonally. <laughs> That's like one of my favorite scenes. It's like, yes, words matter. <laughs> words really, yes, words matter. But the fact that you can, stuff like that, okay, like you were just saying, it, it, it was subliminal, but yeah, words matter, people. Watch what you say, because <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely... Um, I have had to learn that so that's what I try to do with each of my stories is try to put some subliminal message in each of the stories to help somebody who might be coping with whatever 
theme of the story I might be having going on with her. Like the different things I've had are interracial dating, um, getting over being raped, uh, loss of family members due to, you know, medical issues, single parents, a single mother, a single father. Um, you know, those are kind of, you know, the player who, <laughs> the player who gets over being a player and realizes he needs more than he thought he did. You know, the single mom who just got dropped <laughs> by her husband in a divorce after having a young baby, you know, and trying to better herself. Those are the kind of stories that I like writing. That's why I said it more like when this fiction, not your regular that's, that's contemporary romance. I'm interested in like our, like to our type of narrative, like. Right? People from different walks of life, like I love that. Like, Does everybody have a story? And I feel like it should be heard and be shared with other people. So, have you ever had anything that you've written and somebody say that they could like really relate to it? Like when I used to do writings for school. When I used to, when, yeah, I, I okay. when I used to um write in school, I used to have to write. What do they call like I don't I can't think of the specific the specific name, but we used to have to write stories and essays in school. Mm -hmm. I, I used to write several and like my, my fifth grade teacher, Miss Love, like she's the reason why like I'm proficient in writing because she used to be on me like my paper like it could be a grade of ninety eight or something like that. But she tell me like it's really worth 125. Like she really tell me like she loves the way my like the way I think, the way I like put things together. Like that that really helps motivate a lot of things I do. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah, we asked the crazy boys question. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if you were in a padded cell and wore a straight jacket. What color would it be? Mine is purple with butterflies. Green. Green is your color? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so when you, because you said you do reach creative uh, writer's block every now and again, what do you do to get past it? Good question. I have to do something like something off the wall, but it brings me back to reality. I slap myself like no cold water on my face. Wait. Yes, yes. No, wait. <laughs> yes. I thought she could say slap somebody. Um, <laughs> like, come in, Mon. Slap. What I have to do. <laughs> you walked like, out of the room. <laughs> but I would rather like do something like that. <laughs> Instead of somebody telling me, like, bro, you waste the time, you procrastinate, like, I feel myself doing it, so I do something. I might pinch myself, like, you know, if I heard somebody say, pinch me, like, because I think I'm dreaming. Like, uh -huh. Yeah, I, I have to pinch myself, like, to wake up sometimes. Like, I get caught up in my subconscious mind, like, oh my God, like, especially with writing, like, so many ideas, they coming from every angle, like, uh -huh. be hard to grasp them and put them where you need to put them. Now I will say I have I go through the issue sometimes from time to time. Uh, I will like be working on one story. Oh, okay, this is the best way to say it. First book I was writing when I had a general idea because really in the whole story of me writing, I wrote the first book, thought I was bomb, wrote the second and the third. <laughs> Cause it's like when I finished the first story, I was like her secondary characters. It's like, oh, she needs a whole new story, and let's get her story too. So I had wrote the first one, wrote the second one. Guy, lady came to read. She was like, mm -mm -mm. so I never finished writing the third one all <laughs> the way originally. So after a whole bunch of going back and forth and trying to figure it out and all this other stuff, um. Dang, I kind of lost my train of thought. That's so sad. I got a little distracted. Hey! <laughs> but, uh, uh huh. So I got a little distracted. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I did go through the whole process of. Dang it, I lost my train of thought. I cannot get that circle back. They, they, what were we talking about? Too. Okay, really? Because they want me in here with food, too. What you was talking about? <laughs> 
talked about how Lady came. She was all um, she critiqued the. Yeah, we were talking about the critique and the rewriting, and Lady K just came in the room again. <laughs> We just say how we were both on this thought pattern, and then we all came in, and we about, just not, we just got all screwed up. Yeah, we were talking about writer's block. She and, then, <laughs> and she dances. She's litty. <laughs> slow dance. I don't even know what that is. That's, a, that's not even a slow dance. That was a slow backup. What was that? I don't even know. Dang it. I wish I could remember where I was going with that thought pattern. It's the, it's the writer's block. It's the writer's block. Yes. <laughs> the writer's block did it. Oh, we were talking about other thoughts and ideas coming up in the middle that'll mess you up. So yeah, so like I said, I had wrote the first three. <laughs> when I had wrote the first three, I actually had a character that came to mind that had wasn't even a part of the first three books. It was just because when I had played around with the concept of turning the one book into a six book series, I was like, okay, so and so so and so book one, so and so so book two, so and so so book three, four and five. I was in the middle of writing the first book, and I lie to you not, some random scene about the characters from my fifth book came up, like out of nowhere. Because, like in the re in the realm of my story world, these characters, the characters from the first and the fifth book, don't even know each other. They're like Los Angeles, Georgia. There's no connection. Like, there's no connection between these characters That's other than crazy. the man being the friend, the twi friend of the twin brother of the girl in the first book. But that's it. There's never any connection that crosses over at all. Okay. But these two, there was this scene of the two of them meeting that played in my head over and over and over again, and it was just hilarious because of how sarcastic the woman was and how nonchalant the guy was. Uh -huh. To her reaction because he just got right, he just enjoyed seeing her riled up. So he literally would sit there and say different things to her just to see her get pissed off. Because you know how that phrase goes when you're sexy when you're angry, so, you know that. So it was, you know, and because in that particular story, she was newly divorced, he was the player dude, and it was like, you know, they had like really don't even like each other, but there's like this connection between them that both of them are fighting so much. So in this particular scene. When she yelled to cuss him out over something as simple as, as him having walked into the house and dropped a whole bunch of mud off his clothes in her sister's house or whatever. She's like, you need to clean it up or whatever. And he's like, whatever. That scene stayed in my head and just kept playing and playing and playing. So I literally had to walk away. <laughs> oh, my God. I had to walk though. away. <laughs> you Marcella, you can't see this. Oh, Marcella has logged on. Marcella, you can't see this, but Lady K just walked in and started dancing to the song. Let's give me out of here. But yeah, I literally had to just drop everything I was doing in the book I was writing to get published to write this one scene of the two of them and literally file that sucker away in a notebook and wait four years to get to the point that I was able to write that book for it to get published. And when I had to finally get to the point where I could pull out the notes from that scene and actually write that scene, do you know that was like the happiest moment of my life? I was like, it took four years to just get to this point. Just write this one scene. And it's still my favorite scene in that book. It's still my favorite scene. I love this one too. Yeah, so it's, sometimes it's, your writer's block can come from other characters. But again, that's me on the crazy book. I'll write that sometimes at work on our little message board. If it's, I already know I'm going to have this, just going to be one. Excuse me. When I already know it's going to be one of them days, I'll be like, MJ's on the crazy bus. Who's with me and my coworkers? I've explained the whole concept of the crazy bus. So they'll like, they'll go like sign up to what seat they're on. Somebody's always, <laughs> it's always the same person in the booth. Yeah, because they know that I'm a writer, all right? And it's cool because. With me being a librarian, I actually have managed to get my books in the library. That's what's up. So that's that's really cool, and I appreciate them because they're very supportive of me too. So, like, if I'm if somebody will come up and be like, "Hey, I'm trying to find a good book by like an African American author," they'll be like, "Have you heard of M.J. Kane?" <laughs> and I'll just be sitting over there working like, this, 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 this. and they'll be like, "Yeah, that's her right there," and they'll look at me like, oh, "What? Let me get the book." They don't know squat about me. They don't know what the hell the book is about. <laughs> but they'll go get it, read it, come back, and give me great feedback. So that's one thing I appreciate about working there. It's because, yeah, I'll, I'll get random comments on a regular, regular feedback. And I'll be like, can you please put that on my Amazon? 
the priest, please. It don't ever happen. <laughs> but the verbal is great. <laughs> the verbal is great. All right. So, what do you do when you do find your closet space? <laughs> your space to go to your closet, or like you said, sometimes you just gotta walk out the house and just go somewhere. What do you do um, to turn on your creation, creative juices when you have that time? I just zone out, like I tune out, like I be in this deep state so I can brainstorm. Like it could be, it could be a police chase going on while I'm standing so close to the street. I wouldn't care, like, cause I'm so in tune to what I, what I, what I'm trying to create or generate, like. Mm -hmm. so, so it don't take that much. It don't, like, I just have to separate myself from distraction, like anything that a. Infiltrate. So you really put I on your headphones and that's it. That is yes, it. I, I zone everything out, but I'm still alert, still conscious of my surroundings. I just have to go into this deep state where I have to cook. It's my turn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do. You gotta cook up the my idea. Shoot. So have you ever got to a point to where you've just given up and just walked away from you know songwriting in general? Because of feeling discouraged, because I know you said you just recently in the last year got back into songwriting. Yes, like it's been several times. Like I've let people' opinions and you know thoughts crush my dreams or my motivation, my drive. Like so, I I, I stop like. Just trying to find myself, like, what should I do? How should I come about this? Like, then again, I come back to the central idea of, like, what does it matter? Like, does it concern me? Like, like how can I better me? Like, how can I be better at what I'm trying to do? Mm -hmm. So, so have you found that part of that may have been having to change, change your? people around you yes has that been a part of it yes yes and that's what it was because a lot of a lot of those people who was surrounding me they was pure haters like and that's just real so i surrounded myself around some positive people and people who would rather see me do better not the ones who want to see me at the bottom of the crowd but that is so true as lady kane says facts yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have got to, it don't matter what you're doing in life, if you're not doing anything creative, just living in general, just trying to make it day to day, you got to change your surroundings. Yes. Where you go, the people you deal with even, you know, what you let influence you on the outside because like you say, you got them haters that'll hold you, hold you back for no reason. It's like, you're not even doing anything to affect them. You're just trying to do stuff for you but exactly. because they're jealous of it. And what's so crazy, you know you great and you know you don't have to hang around those low frequency people or like just be like that low frequency. Low frequency. That's something that I've been learning here a lot lately. Been hearing a lot of Lady Kane and Tech talk about the frequency and the vibes that people are giving off. Three. And you can tell who's in the building based on the energy. I mean, even though I'm not here as much as everybody else, but when I am here, I can kind of tell when the energy level goes yes, down and yes. when the energy level is high. Because me as being a creative person, even if I'm not even trying to work on anything that I'm doing or working on anything at all for the studio, as a creative person, I have been finding just my vibes sometimes from coming from work and then coming here and just sitting. It's just like picking up on those vibes makes it <laughs> in my mind. <laughs> when we learn the physics, like everything is frequencies and vibrations. Right? So whatever you dish out or what you get back. Like, okay, we can be sitting in the studio with people mad about oh this three hundred four dollar light bill or mm -hmm. things of that nature, but you got somebody else who come in. Like somebody for example like Lady Kane. She probably meant to like the head. You can call out several times today. <laughs> She could probably have the worst day in the world, like, but she still come here smiling. She's jolly. She's happy, and and for me to always be down, like I go through so much, and to come to the studio and have her like uplift me and makes me happy, like, I'm the type of people I be trying to be around. I don't need no low frequency people. Yeah, I like that. I know I find myself sometimes having to on my way over here, having to 
to sit here and just keep thinking. I need to make sure I have positive vibes. I need to make sure I have positive vibes. I need to make sure I have positive vibes before I walk in this building. Because if I already know that my vibe is not going to be all that positive, I'd be like, nah, I probably don't need to be there today. Because I don't want to have my vibes to say nobody else's vibe. Because there's way too much positive energy going on. And all that needs to keep happening in this building is positive energy. Because the more the positive energy, the more positive things are happening. So it's like, yeah. <laughs> if I can't find it, then I probably need to just go home today. <laughs> And I mean, every and it's not everybody's not always gonna have it every day. It's just the reality of the situation. But I have noticed there are some artists that'll come in and they'll just be in here for a minute. So whether they are here to share some of their love and leave some positive vibes, because I think TPGOE came in one time doing one of the lock in, and they specifically just came and it was just like, well, we can't stay. But we're just gonna leave our positive energy in the deal. It makes a difference. It does. I tell you what, I learned some things. <laughs> All right, so now that you're where you are now, 23, right? Yes. 23. Such a precious age. Yes. Such a precious age. So now that you're 23, you make it, you're at the point now that you're making some changes and stuff in your life and you're really trying to get back into your creative side and your music and all that other stuff. Um, I would say, what have you learned on your journey so far in life that you want to put that's going to, what are the positive things I put that way that you've learned in life that you're looking forward to putting into what you're doing now? Because you said you've already got rid of some of the negatives in your life. Make to make a way for the positive. Be self-sufficient. Like, do for you, worry about you, focus on you. Like, is it? If you don't if you don't dream or put in the work or do anything for you, it's not going to happen. Like you can't, you can't worry about the next person's dreams, aspirations. You got to worry about you. Focus on you. You sound tired. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm tired. Boy, you no. <laughs> We've been having a very yes. enjoyable conversation. I've been enjoying it. Yes. I've been enjoying it. I've been enjoying it. Mine's been in and out. Being a peanut gallery, of course. Because you know, mine can never. I think both of us kind of have to tell mine. It's like, mine, you're the next show, sir. You're the next show. Ah, hey, you can to make sure you break some life for you. What I'm saying. You can't be saying. Nah, we don't. Oh, yes, yes. They would have taken <laughs> this is my motivator, right? No. You know what I'm <laughs> we're at the last few minutes, so we wrap it up. Ah. Um, <laughs> already? Yes. Already? I can't <laughs> believe it's been an hour and forty-two minutes. This <laughs> is an hour and forty-two minutes. Y'all haven't been live the entire hour and forty-two minutes. You said right? Yes, ma'am. Your time don't show it. It's showing it on the screen right now. When I just look, oh, when I look, it mm -hmm. only said an hour. And I'm like, ooh, they got long. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we started a little bit after this. Oh, okay. Yeah, we started a little okay. bit after this. Okay. All right, so do you have any advice for any young people out there? Like Marcella said, she had her niece and nephew babysitting. Oh. She needed them to get some uh, some advice on writing in the music industry and everything. What can you take from your experience and share with young people? Don't be scared to be different. Like, I'm not smoke just because someone say I'm smoke. Like, I'm smoke because of me. Like, you got to find yourself, like, once again, like, do for you. Like, don't follow behind nobody. Be different. And never, and never be scared to be open to wisdom. Like, wisdom is good. Mm -hmm. Either even if it's good or bad, like it's just a free game. <laughs> <laughs> you said it was free what? Free, free game. game. Free game. Free game. Free game. Free game. Free game. game. Okay, I'm trying to make free sure game. you say gain, as in gaining free wisdom or game. Gotcha. Oh yeah. yeah. And question things. Don't be scared to ask questions. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's very true. <laughs> Never go for it. Nobody tell you. All right. So where can people find you online? 
Find me on Instagram, Smokes underscore World Times Two, and on Twitter, Dirty with Two Wise underscore <laughs> Bastard. <laughs> That's on Twitter. What? <laughs> Hold on. He said go. Dirty. You say with two T's underscore. No, with two Wise. Two Wise. I'm sorry. Dirty. dirty with two Wise underscore Bastard. and Bastard. Dirty with two eyes underscore faster. Faster. <laughs> what I mean. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. no, no. no what was unexpected was earlier in the evening when we were talking. Okay, so Lady K. Uh-huh. We're gonna backtrack it to his Back bio. Track. We're gonna backtrack to the bio. He was reading at the age of one the newspaper, right? What? He was writing by the age of three. He started writing lyrics to songs at the age of nine. And when I asked him what type of songs he wrote, he said they were explicit. I said, yeah, dang. <laughs> I'm like, look at this. He wrote at the age of nine. They were explicit. What? Yeah. I'm going to him to come bring one of them back to the party scene because I want to know what the hell. <laughs> yeah, I need to. Uh, yeah, I guess have to have him on the But I, I think it all came back down to his influences were. His uh, musical influences were. At the time. Obviously. Obviously, uh, exactly. Obviously, <laughs> obviously <laughs> ODB. There's one. <laughs> but yes, I have to say, I am very, very impressed and proud of this show. I man, knew you were right here, so, yes. yes, yes. So, Mr. Smoke, <laughs> with the three at the end and not an E. <laughs> I have to say thank you very, very much for agreeing to sit down with me today and, and talk. And I am so looking forward to seeing what all you're going to be doing with the Grind Factory because I know you're going to have some stuff coming. Oh, yeah. It's going to be big. You know, Grind Factory, we stay working 25 8. Right. 25 8, I like that. Ain't no 24 7. It's 25 8. I like that. I like that. So, yeah, so. I don't know. Do you feel like you have creativity in you now to throw together something real quick for, for our viewers? Not right now. Not right now. I can't, I can't lie. That, well, there's no problems. No problems. I know we, I kind of blocked you from the, the creative juices that's going on down the hall. We, so we got stopped stop first coming in. Like, it was so much, like, I should have prepared, like, and this, I want to apologize because, you know, like, you know, me and Tech had a conversation. He's like, he feel as if I, like, say, by me, you know, being family or whatever, like, I should start taking this more serious, like, and I should show, like, my strengths and be more creative, like, stand out more, like, because everybody in here that I know, like, they creative and they stand out. To a certain point, so it's about my time to show my creativity. There you go. And I look forward to our next encounter. Oh, yes, definitely. I, I will, you have, can always I will come have, back. have a treat for you. I will have you can treat. always come back. See, what you do is when mine come on, you come crash mine. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Because <laughs> mom was in there to get all extra serious ones. I, I, I told mom, I said, mom, I got you next week. I well, got you know, he's the lieutenant governor. Yeah. So, you yeah, know, he's feeling himself. He's going to 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 He's but Bond is always a pleasure to have show yeah. pop in on any of the shows. He yeah. always is. Yeah. Cause, and that's what I love about being up here is the fact that it is really a sense of family in this it building. Is. You know it what is. I'm saying? Everybody has their role. Everybody has the thing they do and, their, and what they can bring to the creative pot. Or as I like to say, the gears. Because it's all a grind. grind. Yes. And everybody has a gear, whether it's a big gear, little gear, medium sized gear, whatever. It takes all the gears. Yes, and they all come together. And <laughs> they all come together to make everything work. So, yeah, I definitely look forward to seeing what your gear is going to be doing for the grind factory. And it's on the way. on the way. All right. So, I will be looking forward to hearing that, that, that song, whatever it is, when it get recorded. Yes. For that single. I got you. I've been here one day at work. Be like, who is that? They're going to be like, that's my boy. Nice. That's like they did when they said, that's Jay Jerkin. I was like, what? <laughs> he 
said, he said, what? <laughs> All right. So we're going to start wrapping it on up. Uh, everybody, again, thank you uh, for tuning in. For anybody who's going to stop by after the fact, because you know it's a Friday. Uh, no, it's a Saturday. Dang, this week been off. Yes. Like, all oh, freaking <laughs> week. In my mind, I'm thinking it's Sunday, and I was supposed to have been at work. Now, watch. I got to just remember to go to work, Mark. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're hoping I show up at one o'clock too. I'm they just saying. They're gonna call you. They gotta find my number. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How you gonna call you now? <laughs> Cause I'm not working at my regular branch. Oh. <laughs> I'm working at the big branch, so they ain't got my number like that. Them folks they ain't gonna know who I am. <laughs> it's about seventy of us, and it's different people gotta rotate through this one building on Sunday, and it's not the regular staff that works there. So we coming from the different branches. So she on the plan. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure she'll find my number. <laughs> As it is, she already sent me an email last Sunday at work. Talking about just a friendly reminder. You will be working this Sunday from 1.30 to 5.30 at headquarters. And I'm like, I did it. <coughs> Should have been like my other co-worker. Got them all out the way early when they first started in September. But me, no, I didn't feel like it. So what do I get? I get the one that's right after a holiday. They better not do this crap on this after Christmas. MJ, <laughs> 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 you're required to go to work at headquarters. Like, why are we open? Ain't nobody gonna be there. <laughs> That's all right. I'm be sitting over in the children's section. Where ain't no kids gonna be coming in. Why? Because it's Sunday after the holiday, and these parents have been out in the streets. And trying to travel back home. I'm just gonna be sitting over there for four hours just looking at stuff. Anyway, so <laughs> So again everybody, thank you for tuning in. I know it's been a couple of weeks, but we're gonna make that better. But I ain't even gonna lie, we're rolling into holiday season and y'all know how it is. Ain't nobody trying to be nowhere that they had planned to be three months ago <laughs> during the month of November. It's a taking a break, okay? <laughs> So um, I will confirm this again this evening, but I'm pretty sure it's mine. We'll be on our next episode of Is It <laughs> with MJ Kenny. <laughs> so in the meantime, please be sure to like, share, and follow this post. Uh, please be sure to like, share, and follow this wonderful young man, Smoke, so you can stay in touch with him. Find out what's going on with him and where his career is headed. And also, as always, please be sure to tune in to the Grind Time Radio ATL, where you can see our shows that we have that are um, coming up now. Major shenanigans. We've been a little oh, ass. Yes. <laughs> We've been a little Let's empty. move on. <laughs> we gonna keep around. Yeah. We still here. But as you stay tuned, if get a chance. Go hop on over to the Grind Time um, Radio, um, excuse me, Grind Time, oh God, I can't even get it out, the grindfactory.com, the website, check out our weekly blogs, and you'll be saying some of the stuff that's been going down here at the radio, and a lot of big things that is popping that's been actually having to drag us away from having the time to sit down and shoot the crap, basically, with major shenanigans. It's been a lot of positive vibes. It's positive things going on. Nothing negative Always. whatsoever. It's just been positive. And sometimes when you get to that positive side of things, you kind of got to step away from the regular to get that stuff done. So you'll be hearing some more about it. But you can also keep in mind to check out the party team with Lady Kane. Hey, I'm trying to see if I can have the president of East Point on that. She was trying to get it. I see you know, you know, I was trying to get uh, it's mine, AKA. Oh, 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 Okay, we're gonna try to hang him on uh, the party team next week, and you'll see the significance of that as well. Um, you can check out the significance of that when you check out this um, Monday's um, blog post um, for uh, the Grind Factory. Dot com. Big things going down, people. Big things going down. But you can always, without a doubt, always check in with um, Pretty Tigger for really real Thursdays. On what day? Thursday. Every Thursday, she is in this building. 
bring in the grind um, and let you know what's going on in the streets, let you know what's going on with local um, musicians and the underground, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. President we've got, got be. Oh, okay. The president of East Point, KT, will be indeed be on the party team next Saturday. Now. <laughs> Unless things change yeah, and his presidential My schedule. Goal. Get cemented. Know how the district goes. You know, <laughs> delegations. He's got, <laughs> with, he's got other things he has to have. We always know the candy is always. <laughs> can't go, can't he's real. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? I need him to be careful between now and next day. It's like the motor show. The after, so let's see. Party TV at 8 to 10. And 10 on 1, I don't care what the president does. <laughs> I just need him to stay clean. <laughs> <laughs> He's on the show. Yeah. So that is what we're going to be having for now. So again, thank you so much for your time today, sir. Thank you for having me. Hope you enjoyed your margarita. Yes. I guess I'll finally finish mine when we get off the air. <laughs> did, you, who, did you provide the margarita? Y'all are so lucky. Y'all can't get her to just provide nothing for me. She was like, yeah. must be nice. <laughs> The grind house kitchen. The contact the grind house. Just me. Just <laughs> <laughs> me. He messaging me. <laughs> what you the president? What? Hmm. <laughs> All right, guys. We're gonna wrap this on up. Um, until next time, y'all have a good weekend. Enjoy the rest of your holiday. Enjoy your Saturday night. Get your sleeping on Sunday and prepare to go back to work on Monday. Let's go to bed. <laughs> night, night. <laughs> 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 <laughs>